watching the Merlin Player Show. All right, my guest today was an All-American at Willow Barrow High School in New Jersey, where she scored 2,776 points. It was the MVP in the WBCA uh, All-Star Game. Uh, high school state championship in 2004 with the 28 and one record and then transitioned over to the University of Maryland where in freshman year averaged 17 points, 10 and a half rebounds. In her sophomore year averaged 17 points and eight and a half rebounds. Then she slacked off in her junior year and averaged 15 points and eight rebounds. Uh, where also she shot 70% from the field that year, the best ever in Maryland's history and ACC history. Uh, then in senior year, 17 points a game and nine and a half rebounds, uh, totaled 2,247 points, which is second all time, 1,229 rebounds, which is second all time, 889 field goals, which is second all time, 890 is number one. 16.6 uh, point points per game as career average, which is third all time, nine rebounds per game uh, over a career, which is second all time, 65% from the field, you already know, that's number one, fourth in NCAA history, uh, 59 double doubles, number one, uh, 18 of them in the freshman year, which is a record. You know, you had a game where you was 29 points and 22 rebounds versus Miami, my goodness. Uh, scored double figures 125 times. That's fourth, good for fourth best in NCAA history. Uh, member of the 2006 championship team, ACC player of the year in 2008, first team all ACC tourney uh, team in 2005 and 2006, second team all ACC tourney, uh, team in 2007 and 2008, ACC Rookie of the Year 2005, all ACC First Team 2006, 7, and 8. One of only 10 people in ACC history to make first team three times. Only Turp in history uh, as a, as a four-time all ACC honoree. Let me give you a couple of onlys now. Only multiple time All-American in Turp history, only player to have four 500 point seasons, only player in NCAA history to lead nation in the field goals percentage three times, first Turp ever to score 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds, first Turp ever to be named preseason ACC Rookie of the Year, ACC Player of the Week six times, which is a record as well, Number one in field goal percentage in Terps history and ACC history. Member of the Fiber World Championship team under 21, where you, where you got a gold medal, led that team in scoring 16 and a half points per game. Uh, jo a John Wooden finalist in 2006 and seven, the number sixth pick in 2008 uh, to the, in the WNBA draft to the Mystics, highest Terp ever played 12 years in the WNBA with the Mystics and Seattle Storm, uh, uh, 2008 to 2020, two-time WNBA champion, two-time two WNBA All-Star. Also, don't think it's just on the court, ACC on the road team in 2005, six and seven, and an All-American academic, uh, academic team, 2006, seven, eight, I can go on and on. Let's get on with the show. It is not over. I could have kept going through the accolades. I mean, that is incredible. What an incredible career, Crystal. Thank you for joining the show, Crystal Langhorn. Thank you for having me. I guess I did have an okay career. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had to cut that thing off. It is just crazy. We have to get on with the show. So, so like I said, terrific, terrific career. Let's 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 start from the beginning. Um, growing up in, in, in Willingboro, uh, New, uh, New Jersey, what was that like for you? Yeah, it was a great place to grow up. Um, it was a working class black suburb uh, out of Philly. I was a South Jersey kid. And, um, you know, just growing up in Willingboro, I, I love basketball. I didn't start playing until I was like 
in junior high. So I was like 12 or no, 13 or 14 when I started playing. I was a late bloomer. So my brothers played, I was tall. So I was like, you know, I might as well try it out. And um, it was just a great place to play basketball. We had a a tremendous girls team there. People always supported us and it, it was just a good environment to grow up in. Right, right. So, you know, when I watched you play, you know, the style of play now, you know, they like to shoot the jumpers and the threes and stuff. I mean, you ain't play like that. It was straight beast mode out there. Yeah. You know, where, where did you get that style of play from? I, I'm not really sure. I played with the boys growing up some, and then it was just kind of, it was a knack. Like it was just the way I played. Um, you know, I was tall, so I was a post player. I worked on my hook shot. I worked on my footwork a lot. And um, I wasn't scared of the contact. So just, that's just how I played. So so where did that confidence come from? I mean, right out the gate, you step right in there and uh, as a starter, averaging 17 points a game, 10 and a half boards. I mean, that's incredible in your freshman year. Yeah, I, I guess I would say um, I've always been a person where it's like you put in the work and then the confidence will come. I'm not like someone who could just kind of wing it. I like to prepare. I like to be ready for things. And I feel like that's the way I've always kind of played. That's the kind of way I lived my life. So, um, you know, that's where my confidence comes from. So tell me a little bit about uh, playing for uh, coach, Coach Brenda Freeze. What was that like? Uh, it was high energy. Um, you know, Brenda was what 35 when I went to Maryland. So she was young. She was, she was my age when uh, I went there. So, you know, it was just a lot of energy. It was a family environment. It was a lot of fun. Um, she always encouraged us to be ourselves, but to also have a good time too. It wasn't just about basketball, which I really enjoyed uh, just the way she kind of let us be who we were as people. That's great. That's great. So going into your cha the championship year, 2006, how, how did you feel going into that season? Did you feel that you guys had a, a very good chance to get there? I mean, you had a lot of talent, a lot of uh, uh, WNBA uh, players that went on to play uh, at the professional level. So did you? how did you feel coming to that season and what was that season like? Yeah, I remember our freshman year, the year before that, um, you know, we were excited about being ranked 15 because Maryland women's basketball, we had a drop for a little bit. So for us to be ranked 15th, we were excited. So coming into the next year, we, we brought in some uh, Christy and, and Marissa. We brought in some more really good recruits. And I remember it was the Thanksgiving tournament. We played Tennessee and Tennessee was at the top of their game. You know, they had Candace Parker. She was my year, but they had like a lot of other players and they were like one of the big dogs in college of basketball. And um we lost that game to him, but we played him close. And we almost won and we were just like, we can play with anybody. I remember because after the game, people were sad, but we were like, we can play with anybody. Like we got a squad too, you know? So I feel like at that point we realized like we could be a champion, you know, we could be, we could be nice. We can be, we could take our game to the next level. Yeah, okay, all right, that's what's up. So you have this unique distinction. As a matter of fact, me and you both, uh, we are the first men and women to have our jerseys retired as act while we were active players. So tell me what did that feel like, you know, uh, seeing your jersey in the rafters and, and, and you're still playing. What, what was that feeling like? Oh, I was so honored. I remember it was, um, it was packed. Everybody came out to, it, it's Xfinity now, but it used to be Comcast, but um, <laughs> it was packed that night. And um I just remember a lot of people told me I was making a mistake going to Maryland because like I said, it was a drop in the program for a little bit and I was supposed to go to certain schools, but I, I, I it was probably crazy when I, when I look back at it, it was a crazy decision I made to go to Maryland, but <laughs> I really believed in Brenda's vision. I really believed she was going to turn the program around. Right. So to go from that and to winning a championship and kind of having my stamp on the program to then having my Jersey retired, it just, it meant everything because, you know, that's why I came to Maryland to kind of change things um, and get us back to where we used to be. Yeah, that's what's up. I know a little bit something about that. So, yeah, that's, that's what's up. Uh, what, what do you think about the, the current team and, and, and their chances at a championship? Of course, if they're healthy, but, you know, uh, you have the young, the young uh, kids, uh, 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 sellers 
Uh, mm-hmm. She's stepping up now, and then when Awusu gets back, I mean, she has a great feel for that game. She can pass that ball, um, and, and they just have a lot of talent, you know, Angel. Um, so what do you think about their chance to win the championship? Yeah, we definitely have a squad. I mean, it's we have the star power. We have really good role players. Um, you know, we have players coming off the bench. So, and especially when we get Ashley back, I think once again, it's like we have one of those teams where you can play with anybody. It's more so, you know, it's it's more about the luck of the draw. Like things have to just happen in your favor. Like it just has to be a special season. So um, I definitely believe we have the pieces. We can make that run. It's just, you know, if it's our time or not. Yeah. So what was the biggest adjustment for you uh, going from college uh, to the pro ranks? Uh, what was that? What was that adjustment like? Yeah, I had a big adjustment. Um, so uh, in college, I was I was still an undersized post, um, but I was I was deboing people. I could kind of go through people. Yeah. Um, you know, I didn't really have to shoot from the outside. And when I got to the league, everybody was big, everybody was fast, and I was like, this this is not gonna work anymore. <laughs> I got to change my game up a little bit. So <laughs> my first season overseas, um, I was working on my jump shot through college, but it, I just still didn't have that confidence. Yeah. And my first season overseas, my coach was like, just shoot it. You work on it every day at practice, just, just shoot it. And I just started shooting it and I developed a face-up game and that changed everything for me. It Like if, if that didn't happen, I don't know where my professional career would have gone because I just... I wasn't going to be able to play the way I played in college at the professional level. So um, my coach, it was in Lithuania. I, I forget his name. It was so long ago, but yeah. he definitely uh, changed my, my career because like I said, I, I developed a face-up game. I developed a jump shot. And, you know, the next year coming back into the league, I got most improved. Everyone was like, oh, okay, you're doing something different. <laughs> like, okay, Langhorne changed your game a lot. So um, that was definitely, it was a challenge. My first, my rookie year, I was like, uh-oh, this, <laughs> this is not looking too hot. So um, I definitely had to change some things. That was my biggest challenge. Hey, you know what? That's great to hear that because I, I think that most coaches feel like that last part and, you know, all the things that you worked on, now you're into a situation where you got to pull it out. That's solely on you. But right there, that, that example right there, it took your coach encouraging you too in order for you to pull that out. So, you know, the coaches have their hand in that, that part of the equation too. So that, that, that's good to hear that. Yes. Um, so, so let's move on to your, your WNBA career. How, how was it winning two championships uh, with the Storm, especially that first one uh, against your former, uh, former team? Was that one a little bit more special? Um, well, it was my first WNBA championship. So yeah. And of course it was like, I don't hold any grudge. I'm like, I try not to hold grudges with people. So I wasn't, you know, angry with these. Still wanted to show them though, right? You know, it still felt good like that we won um, and that we had the better team. So <laughs> uh, that year, but um, no, it was great. Uh, tw- 2018, like I said, it was the first one. 2020 was more of a challenge because we were in the bubble. Um, so it was just like, we were living in Florida for three months. We couldn't go anywhere. All you had were your teammates. It was like a difficult situation. And I always tell people, at least we won because it was yeah. <laughs> it was just like a hard situation to be in. And I'm, and I'm like, at least we came out with a ring. So um, those two championships are great. So is there a difference in winning the, the championship at the, the pro level as opposed to the college level? Is there a difference? Um, if I would say a difference, but you know, my championships in Seattle mean a lot to me. Um, you know, I took on a different role. I came off the bench. I didn't play as much, um, and it, it was different. But I still, I, I feel like I had a better understanding of how important every person was, like on the team. I knew my teammates were important in Maryland too, but it was just kind of like, you know, I have this new role, but I was still very important to our team. But when I always tell people like my greatest moment in basketball was winning a championship at Maryland. I mean, no one thought we were going to win. Um, we, I feel like we built that, you know, we built the program up to win a championship. And I played, you know, I had a much bigger role on the Maryland team when we won in college too. So 
um, you know, that's my greatest basketball moment. Like that will be even like, you know, I, I still live in DC. So when I see people like, you know, people know our names from that Maryland championship team. Like mm -hmm. people know us like yes. in this exciting. area. <laughs> yes. It was like, it, it was just a great time. And like, that was just my greatest moment ever. Just winning that championship. I mean, that has to be an awesome feeling. You got rings all over the place and pro <laughs> ed college. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I wish I had just one of them things. <laughs> so, so now you you're retired and you you're working with the storm and doing some uh, uh, social justice work. Tell me a little about that. Yeah, so uh, we created our social justice platform as Force for Change. Um, it's really our platform to fight institutional racism and uh, create a more equitable society. So, you know, what I do with the storm is I help build our initiatives. Like we have a Kicks for Equality campaign. It's our biggest one where you know, we have our players wearing custom designed shoes, we have an auction, and then we invest that money into a nonprofit that supports BIPOC communities. So it's different in initiatives like that. That's what I'm working on now. Um, and it's been great. Um, I love what I'm doing now. I can also make a difference, but I'm still close to the sport um, as well. Oh, man, that is awesome. That's awesome. Thanks. I mean, you're just still getting it done, I see. All right. <laughs> so, so this is my last question for you. I ask all all my guests, can you tell us something about yourself that most do not know? Um, that most do not know. Okay, so people who don't know me. So I, I guess a lot of people think, I mean, I, they think I'm more of a serious person. I come off serious, I guess, if you don't know me that well. Like, I guess because I like to dress up. So people always think I'm gonna have this um, kind of stiff personality, but I might come off stiff on this podcast. I don't know. I, it might be like that, but not at all. Not at all. <laughs> if anyone who knows me knows, like I joke a lot. I'm, um, you know, I'm when I'm with my friends, when I'm with my family, like, you know, we're always clowning, and we're always joking. So I think a lot of people are always surprised when they get to know me and they know that's how I am. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not what I look like because I, I think some people, Think I'm gonna be a certain way, and I'm I'm not that at all. Oh man, that's what's up. Well, listen, it was such a joy having you on the show. And if you don't know, you better ask somebody, man. I'm telling you right now, Crystal Langhorn, you are a baller for sure. I mean, and you're still getting it done uh, off the court as well. Um, I mean, you just laid the groundwork and a shining example for all student athletes to follow. Thank you so much for joining the show. It is such, such a pleasure. Thank you for having me, Walt. I appreciate it. To host a fan show or appear as a fan on a fan show, create a profile in Fan Media Network. Then look for the news page in our website and Fan Show Resources page. Help yourself. We give show hosts a show graphic and team colors, a simple short show format, tips on pre- and post-production, ideas to get fans and guests on your show, Apple News distribution and show sponsorship sales and services to help featured show hosts earn money. Show hosts use our iPhone app to publish their shows. Our website supports Android users.